So here we got Korean FX straight from Canada. Thank you so much for being here, man. So the first question is, how did you experience this battle this year? Um, so far the battle, you know, I've been here two times already. This is my third year coming back. So, you know, uh, what I've gathered from all these years is that, you know, it's always a great event. Uh, you've got people from all over the world with, you know, coming from different walks of life, uh, coming together for this one love for beatbox. And it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. You know, you kind of have to experience it. So all I can say is that it's really, it's really dope. So, you know, the Emperor of Mike, it's like not just a battle, it's like a whole week with party and stuff. So what is your personal highlight of this whole thing? Um, I'd probably have to say all the jams and the uh, just like the random, you know, spontaneous things that happen. Um, you learn so much from all these guys. And when I go back home, I just try to take it all in and, you know, use it for my new beats and creations. And um, it's just a lot of inspiration out here. I think that's the highlight of it. So man, like you just said, um, when you're going back home, so in Canada, you're probably not pretty famous now. So um, how are things going on? Like is beatbox now really big in Canada or what, what's going on? Um, it's not really big, but it's definitely growing. Um, now that beatboxing has made it onto television and you know, it's in commercials, it's on the radio, you know, there's different, there's even beatbox battles on TV now. They just started that, so that's pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't say it's big, but it's definitely growing and I definitely see a future for it. So I'm gonna keep pushing the beatboxing in Canada and you know, around the world. But um, as far as Canada goes, I definitely see a good future for it. Oh, that sounds good, man. So what are your plans for the future anyway? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I tend not to think too much ahead. Uh, I try to focus on what's you know in front of me. But something I do want to eventually do is create some sort of an album and kind of transition from just you know a beatboxer to a musician or an artist rather than just someone who makes funny sounds with their mouth, right? You know, I want to be able to do full sets of just me, just one man, one microphone on a stage for half an hour and totally rocking the crowd with no slow points, you know, no kind of, uh, no downfall, it's just pure energy, you know, pure excitement, you know. That's something that I think that every beatboxer should strive for to become the best performer that they can. Because, you know, battles are very important uh, in beatboxing culture and just uh, to get better, you know, competing, competition is key. But, you know, there comes a point where battling and being an artist or a musician, they kind of are on two totally different levels. So trying to transition is a very hard thing and I think it's something that beatboxers should try to do more. Because you're saying that you want to um, put the beatbox into, a, a, um, a develop a new style of the beatboxing. Mm -hmm. So to go back to your roots, like when did you start beatboxing? Oh man. <laughs> About 13 years ago, I uh, started to play the drums. Uh, this was in about grade five, and I'm 23 now. And whenever I wasn't around the drum kit, I would just be so inclined to make those sounds like And it kind of got to a point where I just wouldn't stop. And everyone would be like, hey, Terry, do a little bit of beatbox. And I'd be like, okay. You know, some little, you know, the old school beats. And after a few years, I just kept practicing, practicing, and started getting good. And that's when I discovered, you know, the online community, uh, humanbeatbox.com, Beatbox Battle Networks, all that stuff. And I kind of just got immersed in it. And I just, you know, became a beatbox nerd. And it just completely, uh, beatboxing became my life. And I got to high school. And you know how, like, in high school, there's always, like, ciphers, you know, rap battles, kind of, like, little stuff like that going on. I was always the guy doing those beats, so I would just, you know, keep on improving my craft. And then a few years later, I took part in the World Championships in 2009, and that was my first really big international, you know, thing, big international thing for me. And when I came back to Canada, I was just like, man, you know, school's not for me, you know. The beatboxing is what I want to do. I want to make music. And ever since then, I've just been performing around the world, um, battling and, you know, just enjoying life. What was your first beat? You ever, do you still remember, like, your first beatbox pattern you, you made? That I made? Um, it's probably the beat that I did. It was like the...
<laughs> something like that. I always had the that bass um, whenever, even when I was a kid, I had that bass. So it was like the first sound I learned. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so you had you had to train a lot. You like you're always from the beginning. I had a nice bass. Yeah, I always had that kind of bass, and I would just kind of work on different uh, intonations and different like uh, vibrations with that bass. So I would have like the mm, which can turn into a or turn into like a mm, or like a wop wop, you know, different type of t different type of shapes with your mouth. And uh, that's kind of one of my my specialties, the bass. Oh man, that sounds cool. So, um, is there any artist? you would like to work with is this um yeah definitely um there's a couple of guys um who i think are doing really great things that uh, you know i've been uh chilling with a little bit uh in korea in the states and uh and uh, in canada there aren't too many artists um that are emerging but you know recently drake's uh, success has really brought uh, the spotlight to canada and there's a lot of up-and-coming artists so i'm curious to see um, the new artists that are gonna, going to arise from that kind of flock of people. But uh, some guys that I would like to work with is, uh, you know, you got Dumbfounded from LA. He's a really dope rapper that, you know, we chilled a couple times. He came down to Toronto once, uh, no, twice actually. And uh, yeah, I think he's a real dope dude and his lyrics are, you know, they're fire. And, you know, I'd like to work with him. Um, Jay Park from Seattle, you know, he's doing uh, big things in Korea right now. Um, he's also someone I respect. Um, Hmm, who else is there? Basically anyone who makes good music, you know? Uh, that's what I'm about, you know, if you're good, if you're talented, you know, if you got a, you know, a good head on your shoulders, then I want to work with you. And um, I think that's, you know, an important thing to uh, keep your head straight and, you know, don't let your mind get too clouded because uh, in a lifestyle like this where you're always, you know, performing in different places, it, things can get crazy, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> you got to slow down sometimes and just kind of relax, but, you know, there's always time for party. Yeah, and that's true. So, so um, there's like one big um, discussion about um, how the beatbox um, scene is changed. You know, like there's now many, many technical beatboxes. Mm -hmm. Some of them say it should go back more to the musicality stuff, and some of them say no, technical stuff is fine. So, what what is your opinion? Um, I think that technicality is always something that will have that kind of wow factor. It's like, wow, he can do those many patterns in this amount of time that fast. You know, it's always something that's gonna have a, a little bit of an intrigue factor to it. But I think that the old school style of just pure, you know, bob your head type of music, that, that's always gonna be like my favorite kind of stuff to jam to, you know? When someone is a technical beatboxer, you know, and all they do is technical beats, it's not always enjoyable to listen to. But if they can maneuver those beats into something that is structured, then, you know, it could be the greatest thing ever. So, you know, I think a mix of both is a good thing. So what, what would be advice from, from you for a beatboxer who is like now trying to get into his first battles and stuff? Like how do how you think is the best way to prepare for a battle? I think the best way to prepare for a battle is just to really focus on what you want to do. Uh, in the battles and kind of go with that concept and just stick to it and put all your energy into it. Because if you kind of think about too many things, your mind might, might get a bit confused and you might not give it 100%. If you're trying to do one beat, you know, you might do a little sloppy or something, but then you have this next idea that's also a little bit sloppy. But if you have one great, super tight idea, I think that's the best way to go into a battle. And you know, that's something that I've learned over the past years. Just you need to go in with something that is structured and that really, you know, has some sort of um, depth to it. You know, you can't just go in and really just be like, oh, I'm just going to do this, you know, and see how it goes. I've done that a few times and it doesn't really work out, you know. Um, you know, all the battles that I've done well in or that I've won, it's always been like, all right, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this after and then I'm going to do this. And then if he does this, I'm going to do that, you know. There's always a strategic way of battling. Um, and yeah, there's always going to be a strategy factor in there. Because even if you're the best beatboxer and you don't perform well or you battle poorly, you're going to lose. You know, that's just the way battling is. But like I said, battling is completely different than being an artist or, you know, showcasing. So, you know, they're two different worlds, but um, I think that battling is very important. So now we come to the best part from the interview. Can you show us a little some of your skills, man? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I ripped the mic onto the tooth decays. Oh man, nice, nice, really nice. Terry, thank you so much for this interview. It was great. And I'm really looking forward to see you tonight at the jam and also to see the video. Thanks so much, man. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.